Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. I'm your host, Paula Cooney, the brand manager of the Zamboni Company. And speaking of experts, today I am excited to be joined by our guests, Rachel Lieber of Be Well Brands and Danelle Murdoch from Design of Today. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hi, Paula. Before we start chatting, I think that it's fair to uh, have some full disclosure with our audience for the listeners of this episode. Um, I met Rachel, it seems like decades ago, and it may well be, because I knew you before children and before marriage. <laughs> um, so I met Rachel when she was working for the National Hockey League, and she was responsible for all things Zamboni with respect to the likeness being used or licensing that went through her, and we formed a really good relationship, a good working relationship, and that translated into a friendship. And through all of the different things that you've done through the years, Rachel, you and I have been friends, and I met Danelle later through Rachel, but right. maybe you guys yeah. could talk a little bit about how you two met, because I don't really know that I have the background on that. Was that through the NHL? Oh, funny, no, through when I was working at Major League Soccer, um, and we were looking to hire a style guide agency to develop graphics within consumer products, and we were actually working with another agency, and someone um, from one of the movie studios in California had recommended Danelle, and uh, we ended up using Danelle, and I love all of her work and working with her team, and we became really good friends, and we continue to work together in through different companies and whatnot. And uh, yeah, then I connected her to you and now we have this weird little triangle going on. I know, I know. And Design of Today um, helped us get through an ugly project that had just been waiting in the background for quite some time, which was an update to a style guide for our company, which was really important. And it was, it, it definitely needed some work and some cleaning up. And so that was really fun to work together. And I'm sure we'll be doing more things in the future, uh, working together. I think. The thing that's really amazing is that we've all, you know, remained friends, even though we aren't necessarily working with each other on a daily basis. And um, it just kind of reinforces how important it is to have these long lasting relationships and like these networks of people that you can really count on, especially in this business. And, you know, today we're talking about big name brands is kind of the topic, but licensing and design play such a big part in that, that, um, you know, I, I purposely established relationships with some big brands out there, uh, maybe their corporate counsel, or maybe their design team, or maybe editors of publications, or maybe manufacturers, people that are specialists, because I think that that kind of helps us all do a better job at what we do. And I try and reach out to them and you know use them, bounce things off of them here and there. But maybe you guys can each talk a little bit about your areas of expertise, and that'll help kind of give a little texture for the rest of the conversation we're gonna have. Who's first? Sure, you want me to start? Sure, Rachel. Um, I, I mean, I totally echo what you were just saying. I think having um, long lasting relationships is really important. It's always been helpful for me to be able to go and just bounce ideas off of you both. And, you know, because you both work in the same industry to be able to give your insight, but because you come from different lines of work within the industry, you give a different perspective on it. And I think that that's what's really important about it. Um, so my, my company is Be Well Brands and we actually work on the client side of building brand centric licensing programs. And, um, what I think is so important and especially for this call today is about the brand side of things and how you take a really important global brand and how you communicate that and transfer that into licensed product because, um, licensing is just that you're giving your rights to um, a third party company to develop and build merchandise programs under your brand name, but it's so important to make sure that whatever is designed and developed is in line with the brand and who you are. Um, God forbid they go off on their own and create something that is completely off brand, you run the risk of um, insulting or hurting your existing customer base and business. And so it's really important that you put together the materials. And um, that's what I've done through working with Danelle um, and creating style guides is really help establish the directive um, and grow beyond that. And so when I say that we work on the client side of the business is we're just an extension of 
the client's brand team, so and their consumer products team. And um, when the client just doesn't have the resources to bring on full-time staff or doesn't have a full-time need, they um, work. I work with them as an extension of their team, so to make sure that really building those cohesive programs on behalf of the brand and their existing ideation. And that's so important. It's like the um, the idea of having an expert that just gets you there so much faster. And I think that that is what people should be looking for is, you know, the right person to help them drive the product or the projects in the right direction. And Danelle, that's where you made it so easy for our company to get that style guide going because while we had struggled to do it internally, it was just, that's what you do. That's where your skills and talent are and your team just like instantly whipped it into shape for us. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, design of today. Yeah, um, well, I agree that first, can I just agree that relationships are super important because number one, I really do absolutely treasure my relationship with both of you guys. And um, I consider you some of my all time favorite friends in the world and I love being with you and I love working with you. Um, we're all saying heart, 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 kisses and love. Um, but that aside, um, what my role is, is, is uh, an extension of Rachel's and it's being a keeper of your brand, um, looking at and being totally immersed in what that brand is, what it stands for, what it believes, what it looks like, what, um, what is its perception from the outside, uh, at, from the consumer. And why do they love it? Why do they connect with it? What is the hook? Um, it's really important to ask some of these big questions. Uh, some brands, um, you know, when they don't take a stand on who they really are, things really kind of fall apart for them. Uh, and it's really good to come back and uh, create a brand style guide. And that's what we did with Zamboni. We looked at how things were being printed, what colors were being used, is the mark always being uh, created using the same fonts, and and um, is the letterhead always the same? Uh, especially when you have a company like Zamboni that's located in two countries, you have to take a minute, step back, and figure out how to really pull it together. Um, and then on the licensing side with Rachel, it's a it's a whole nother um, type of style guide that can get a little bit more um, playful and fun where we start looking at how does your brand connect with, well, first building a core style guide is really important for any brand property. Um, and a core style guide will connect immediately to the brand. A trend style guide would be something that um, connects to what's coming up in fashion or coming up in home and, and uh, trends that we see going on in the world. And we, we look at those trends and then we bring it into a style guide. So really quick, I don't want to bore you all to death, but a style guide is made up of things like um, icons, composed graphics, patterns, um, and it is also, it can translate uh, further and go into some of your digital marketing um, and your website and other things, but mostly for the licensing, it's built for retail and it's built to capture uh, and connect with the consumer so they can bring part of your brand or your property into their home and into their lifestyle because so many people live through these brands and properties. And we do a lot of uh, building for entertainment companies and film and television and, well, I guess multi platform now, if you will. But in a nutshell, that kind of tells you what a style guide is. It gives you do's and don'ts, and it and it um, it's a really, really fun thing to work on. But you really have to be careful about who you work with on it, um, because generally, it's you need somebody who's completely immersive, and you need somebody who understands good design. It's also helpful, I think, for a brand that may not, or even just a company, just a small business that may not think that it's something that they need. It is a good exercise internally to help you kind of like apply your vision to the things that you're looking at with a style guide and to see if it all kind of continues to make sense 
Like, does it reflect your brand's voice and the colors and the fonts and the things that you've been using and the tools that you have developed for maybe your social media platforms and that type of thing. So it just really kind of helps to glue everything all together. And it was, it was so long overdue. We had, like I said, an out of date one and it was a good exercise for us going through that because it was at a time when we had some new logos and some new letterhead and some new colors and we were kind of taking risks and doing things differently than we had done for the past 60 you know, years before that. So it was a, a great way to take a look at everything in one place. Right, and it, it really can make a difference in the success of your company and in the success of your bottom line. It can change it yeah. fully. Well, let me ask you both and whoever wants to answer, we can kind of figure it out. But, uh, you know, people recognize the brand name Zamboni. And, you know, we talk about big name brands or famous trademarks. And, you know, we're, we're really fortunate to have the brand recognition that we do. And we work really hard to protect it. Um, what I think people don't know is that, you know, we're still a small family owned and operated business. And so it's, it's, Jay, it's Frank fun. Jay. Come on. Yeah, but it, yeah it's, uh, you know, originally Frank Jay Zamboni had a patent on the machine and that lasted 17 years. And then he realized that he was gonna need to continue to build and protect the brand. And so he did that through registering Zamboni as the trademark. And that now has become, you know, synonymous in a lot of people's minds with ice resurfacing equipment. But we do a lot to make sure that people don't improperly use it. Um, the, the question I have for you guys is, how you use your respective skill sets to kind of help guide licensors and people who are big brands as far as not making, you know, mistakes, maybe something that doesn't align with their brand or, you know, something that's been done before and failed or, you know, you have to kind of reject some of those things, what you were talking about, Rachel, before. Where it's like some things just don't make sense. And I think in the couple of decades that I've been doing this with Zamboni, um, we maybe had one item come across for like a, a QC to decide if it was something that was going to happen. And I looked at it, I was instantly horrified. I was like, this could not be more off brand. I cannot even imagine anything this horrifying. We still kept the original what it was as a reminder of don't ever let this happen again. But they had actually gone almost all the way into production because they just assumed it was going to be OK and that it, it to them it made sense. That was their interpretation of the brand. And we were like, wow, that's, that's just not going to happen. So and we felt bad saying no, but you have to be really careful about that. So maybe you can talk a little bit about how you, Rachel, to start with, how you uh, guide people through making sure they're making the right decisions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important. And that's, um, that's what I do is making sure that the brand is properly represented. Uh, you need to have such close relationships with your licensees and watching and being a part of the process as they're developing. So licensing obviously makes it easier for the brand to extend your name because someone else is an expert in the other space. So for argument's sake, say let's call a t-shirt manufacturer, somebody that knows how to produce them, uh, knows the quality that the retailers wants, has the existing relationships, and you want to partner with those type of people, but they are not your brand. They are their own brand, and they're after their manufacturer and their company, and their goal is to get placement and to drive sales, which benefits both companies. But as you were saying, Paula, if you're only involved or you only see something at the late stage, it puts everybody in a very difficult position to retract and so it's really important to make sure that you're part of the licensing process from the beginning um, a lot of that goes back to what we talked about with Danelle is creating um, elements and guides and guidelines that help your licensees better understand the brand and what it stands for um, you don't want them to produce a t-shirt that says Shit, let's go drive the Zamboni because that's not on your brand so you want to be a part of it. You want to give them slogans and phrases and designs and elements that are um, in line with who you are that make it easier for them to develop and design against the product. Yeah, I think that is uh, back to what Danelle was talking about with the style guide. And I don't want to beat the style guide to death, but um, the difference between the core style guide and the trend style guide, like the trend style guide is where you have fun and you play and you help licensees see the boundaries that you're willing to let your brand play within. And that helps them make the right decisions. So they're not wasting time on their own 
designing and then getting shut down because it doesn't make sense. Right, and those programs really need to be built to appeal to those manufacturers and those licensees because the licensees need to understand your vision. And so what we try and do is, is give some inspiration so they can see uh, a type of product that they wouldn't normally think that they could make, they could make for your brand. Um, and it's, it's not only um, taking your thinking out of the box, but it's taking the licensees thinking out of the box. It is giving it some restraints, but it's being very strategic about what those are and how they're done and trying to create something that could possibly be brand new to the whole market just depends. And it's really interesting where some of these brands might end up. Rachel and I have talked in the past, and I think Danelle, we've talked about it as well, about some of like the home runs for the licensing that we've done. And you know, we've been really cautious to kind of keep it in it within the, it makes sense kind of category. It's not like you're going to see, you know, Zamboni car wax or, you know, Zamboni margarita mix, although that does sound good. Um, but <laughs> it, it's interesting because we, we, you never know. So, you know, we have been a Pez dispenser, the Pez candy dispenser. We've been a Happy Meal toy. Um, we've, we're a Playmobil toy and one of their best-selling products. Um, when Rachel and I worked together for some NHL projects, I think one of the big ones that really kind of launched it out of the park was the little remote control toy, the remote control mm -hmm. toys and boy machine with the different NHL logos on it. And that just went like gangbusters the first year that was out. It was so exciting. Well, I hope everybody I is listening to this and they're writing that list down and then they're going to go Google it and try and find it on eBay <laughs> and pay a high, high price for it. I mean, you collectors out there, go get them, go get them, go get them. There you go. So now you should register that URL right now today and put together your little collection and we'll um, we'll get this going. It's a whole business. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to say, I think that's actually how we started um, our business partnership, Paula, is because I was having conversations with the remote control toy manufacturer, licensee for NHL, and we really wanted to do something, but from a kid's perspective, the NHL didn't have any icons or graphic that were so centralized to that target audience. And so we just started conversations about how do we do this with Zamboni? It would be a great, um, obviously a great partnership when people think of hockey, you know, the Zamboni makes its appearance three times during the game. Um, before, middle, between the periods, just so, three. <laughs> you, got, um, you got a bunch of hockey fans here. Okay, so I don't have to explain it. So no, no. It, the Zamboni is so iconic and it's almost cult-like in terms of the following that it just made sense to do that great partnership together and the product came out phenomenal and I think that just led to how do we do more, how do we um, have an existing partnership, a long-term partnership with the NHL, which you still have today, even though I've left. So um, yeah. I think it's Definitely. just a it's a valuable of partnership. marrying up brands. Yeah, it's a valuable partnership, and it it is a testament to you know the work that you put into it, and then the people that have you know been there since then, and the relationship and the importance of it to me to maintain, to our company to maintain. We spend a lot of time. Yeah working together and we look out for each other. If I see things that might be an infringement of their trademark rights, I'm gonna let them know and they help make sure that people stay kind of on brand with the development of licensed products. So there's a lot of trust back to your point about you know trusting the uh, people that you're working with when it comes to licensing and all of that fun stuff. Danelle, I was gonna ask, like you talk, when we were talking about the trend uh, style guide, how, you know, once people are out of art school or design school or, you know, continuing education, what, like, what is there that helps your team stay sharp and out in front of trends and like paying attention to things so that you guys are doing the thinking for the brands that you're working with and designing for? Well, my team is a super specialized uh, and well-seasoned team. We've been doing licensing for 25 years or licensed style guides, I should say, for 25 years for almost any program, children's program, family-oriented program, uh, certain sports, et cetera, that you can possibly think of. Um, and having a team that is knowledgeable about how to create this is really important. Um, all of uh, my designers have degrees in graphic design, number one. 
um, and they um, they all came and interned under me. So they, when they started, they knew how my company worked and they understood what a style guide was. A style guide is just a small, um, style guides being a specialty is just a small part of brand building. And so you have a lot of these large advertising agencies who say they can do it, but they don't totally understand it. Um, and you have smaller, like my team, we're a boutique agency. Um, and there's about 10 agencies like mine, um, maybe 15 in the world, who really focus and do what we do and do it well, really well. Um, because we're not just guessing, we're going in and we are looking at trends. And again, like I said, it's being really immersive in the brand and it's trying to understand or actually come from the consumer pool and understand how the consumer sees that brand and then translating it into something wonderful. Um, of course, we rely heavily on our partners who have hired us and we rely on their inside knowledge. And the other thing, sometimes we have to remind them, you're not the consumer, you're the brand owner. So how does this marriage work and how, do you, how are you communicating with um, the consumer and what, you know, how can they be a part of your brand and how are you going to let them be a part of your brand? Yeah, that's that's the key, right? So when I first came to work for the Zamboni company, um, I was trying in my mind to, I had not been a hockey fan. I was trying to wrap my head around what it was. It was this piece of equipment that, you know, kind of goes around the uh, rink slowly and people pay attention to it. And over the years, I've started explaining it as it's like, it's kind of like a mascot inside the arena. It's a consistent experience. Everybody knows it's going to happen. The kids have a certain fondness for it. The uh, parents, the you know, adults in the crowd want to drive the thing. Like there's, everybody kind of connects with it differently. But again, there's this little fandom that can be described by it's almost like a mascot. Well, and it's made pop pop culture. It's in songs. It's mm -hmm. um, you know, and and then the problem is when that song gets stuck in your head, all you want to do is ride a zamboni. Um, for days on end, you know, and, and people think it's unatta unobtainable, certain folks, because it has hit this kind of pop culture status, which is cool. I mean, big brands, big pieces of machines don't always get that pop culture status. Yeah. And so for, for licensing, that's a good thing for us. Um, it is a challenge because people want to, you know, ride on the machines, which we don't advise unless they obviously know how to do it or have been trained by somebody to do it. But we kind of have like two categories of people that are relating to our company. And it's like people that are in the industry or have a reason to have an awareness of it. And then just the fans outside of that. And we need to make sure that the products and the licensees that we work with are representing something that works for both, because there may be things that work for one crowd that don't work for the other. So we try and make sure that they understand that our, our group is kind of split into a couple categories. Right, and I think there's also that whole side of a child going, I want to play with something that I could clean ice with. Yeah. I mean, the idea of cleaning ice is really fascinating because who cleans ice? How does that happen? What does it, what is the process? You know, so I think there's, there's kind of this scientific fascination um, and play, um, it's, it's the word in the industry, in the toy industry is it's toyetic. So the idea of the Zamboni machine is it's toyetic. I learned something new today and I'm writing that down. Toyetic, it's my new yeah. favorite word. I'm gonna be using that, I'm trotting that one out. Mark my words. Okay. Um, well, an interesting thing that we had in the past that was a licensed product was a desk vacuum that was kind of funny. So, you know, people could really relate. <laughs> so do you do that like at, and in the morning when you get in and then at lunchtime and then when you go home? Is that how that how that works? Yes, that is how it works. It had little batteries. It was on the desk and it was just so funny to um, see people playing with it and posting that online. It would like pick up little shreds of paper and that was about it. But hey, you could resurface your desk. That's hilarious. That's, That's hilarious. Again, there's another one to Google to go see if you can find online and buy today. I'm telling you, we need the toy collectible store. It'll be a trip down memory lane for some folks. I still have some Pez dispensers at our um, 
Paramount facility. I'm not so sure how long the candy lasts, but uh, they're a few years old at this point. So <laughs> it is more for show than anything. Um, so, you know, we, we talked a lot about some of the things that help people that are brands uh, be uh, more relatable to licensees and, and products and the things that you guys do there. I'm wondering if there are like industry groups that brands that are looking to grow ought to be looking at to belong to or like, you know, different you know trade shows like Toy Fair or how do they kind of learn more about this other than, of course, working with the experts like Be Well Brands and Design of Today. How, how, where, where would you guys point somebody who's just kind of starting out? Go, oh, Rachel. Um, there's a couple major um, groups that are overseeing the entire industry, and then it filters down into almost subgroups within toy, apparel, and all of the other categories. Um, so License Global and License International are two of the big ones. Uh, the licensing show, that's not the actual official name. I've actually only ever called it that. And that's what I've heard in the industry being called. Uh, but that usually happens every year in Vegas. And um, But it's a major show where the brands set up and the licensees walk. You mentioned Toy Fair, Paula. That's obviously very specific. And uh, there's Magic and um, Agenda, which are specific to soft goods. Then there's some other smaller ones. So there's a lot of different, but I think if people are really interested in learning about, you know, the ABCs of licensing, to start with licensing internet, license international or licensing global, um, to get some more information. Do you have anything else, Danelle, that you think? Um, I think those are all great. And I met Paula with you, Rachel, at licensing show in Las Vegas. Uh Walking down, there's this little slopey hill by the, um, I can remember you coming, Paula. Walking down. Anyway, that's where we met. Was it live? Was there a soundtrack behind her? I know. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, it, it was just, it was awesome. And, and uh, we've done our best to get Thai food every year, uh, ever since together at that show. Um, but, for me, the key one really is the International Licensing Expo. A lot of people call it Lima. A lot of people call it Licensing Show. Um, but And it uh, it takes place now in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay um, and online probably at this point. Um, but it is, it is the show. Um, they also do licensing summits where you can learn more about licensing. Um, and and that's under one of the uh, brand names you said. I can't remember who does the licensing summit. Um, you can find I, so many things like webinars, you know, online. People can like just kind of start exploring, gathering information. It'll help them kind of formulate some qu questions because then they can come to you guys and ask for you know some consultation about where do they go next, what do they do next. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Rachel, don't you have uh, a seminar or a podcast or something you can talk about here? Um, I have uh, licensing ABCs, which are a lot of the key terms that are available or key terms that people use in the industry. So as you're getting involved, it's really helpful to understand. So um, you can actually download those from my website at bewellbrands.com. Thanks to now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be listening to those later today. <laughs> I definitely I watched I it. It's it. great. It's great. I love it. I love it. And you guys are doing so much to like share your expertise with other people. And that's what's really great is that it's out there and people can, you know, then follow up and get in touch with you guys directly. And you know what? There's also a podcast. I think it's called The Licensing Mix. It's a podcast too. Nice. I think there's no better way to wrap this up than to pit you guys against each other with some Zamboni trivia. So I hope you're ready for it. This Rachel, big, look big, them up. Big, big prize. No, no I didn't get a chance to look them up. I didn't send it to you guys in advance. So I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna ask you a few questions and um, to the victor go the spoils. We'll see. I don't know who's gonna win here. Although Rachel, you kind of had a lot of Zamboni experience being at the NHL, so. You might, you, and I got to visit the factory, so I feel I like I've been to the factory. I, I've been oh. to the factory, and I stood on at least three machines. 
<laughs> even the lake between on the that lake between. Hello. You were this okay. close okay. to driving That's one. Good. This close. So close. So close. Next time when we get together. All right. Which resurfacer weighs more, an electric powered machine or a fuel powered machine? I think fueled because fuel has weight. Uh, I was going to say fuel too. Well, you're both wrong. So there we go. It's electric. <gasps> the batteries are heavy. Heavy batteries. Oh. Very heavy. We're going to go on to the next one. I don't know. I might stump you on this one too. Why does the Zamboni machine have headlights? So I have a guess. at night. Janelle, oh, you can see at night. Well, cool. that's not my answer. Do the not arenas answer. not want to have all their lights on because of the power bill? And so you give it a headlight so they don't have to. That's a very green answer, but that isn't exactly it. Rachel, you, you were closer. I, we have the headlights on the machine. To do... Go ahead. Oh, my real answer was because of um, to be able to see where, like, the path that you've already gone as it's reflecting against the ice. You guys are really putting a lot of thought into this. We, I mean, technically we have them because sometimes the machines go outside to like dump the snow and it might be night or, you know, if they're driving into the area that the snow pit and it's not really illuminated. But we've had people ask in the past, well, why does it have headlights if you're not going out on the road? Um, sometimes I have seen them leave them on, on the ice also for safety. So I guess any of those answers and you guys came pretty close. I'll give you that one. Can I go um, with the zombie apocalypse for the zombie yeah. apocalypse? Well, you you must have headlights just in case of that. That's right. Um, all right. Which continent is the only continent without a Zamboni machine? Do you need a world map in front of you? I, I am going to go out on a limb and give a really weird answer and say Antarctica. Where? You are right. Bing, 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 bing. She said Antarctica. I said Antarctica. Winner. Yep, we do not have any machines there that I'm aware of. Uh, we haven't delivered a machine there, so who knows? Maybe somebody smuggled one there. But you know, for the last, as far as I know, penguins can't drive a Zamboni machine, so there's not much else going on there. But you know, research. Um, maybe soon. I have one more question for you guys. Which famous comic strip mentioned Zamboni 50 times? Rachel raised her hand first. Snoopy. Peanut Snoopy, you're right. But you I was right. Say. Well, then you would have both been right. right. So you guys <laughs> both get some kind of consolation prize in our. Um, we have an official uh, Ask the Zamboni Experts podcast T-shirt that only people who are on our podcast can get. Our staff oh. actually have asked if they can have them because they love the logo so much. And my answer is no. It's just for the podcast guests. So I'll send those out to you guys. It'll be super fun. Karina, did you do that? Did you do the Rita. logo? I Rita did. Is our designer in LA, and she knocked it out of the park on this one. It's really awesome. cute. It's a Zamboni machine, like looking at you, and then it's got little ear, I don't know, earmuffs on. Headphones. What do you call it? Headset. Headphones. It's got a headset. Headphones. Headphones. And sound waves. Oh, I yeah. love it. That's so exciting. Yeah. And yeah, so in good. line with what we just talked about. It is. It is, and it's on brand, and that is like you know we we work externally when we need to, but on a daily basis, Rena does a fabulous job of like helping us keep all of our um, imagery on brand, all of our visuals, all of our graphics, our social platforms, our uh, website, uh, brochures. She helps our authorized distributors stay on track. If they need help, if they want an ad, we'd rather work with them than have them you know, struggle through it on their own. So we're really right. fortunate. And I think that that was an investment that our company made, you know, Rena bringing you in that is, uh, has paid off so so nicely i mean having a designer in-house is just critical for us we have so many moving parts and i think danelle you said something about um the that we had companies in two countries we actually now have a four. company in sweden as well okay. so we've got four cool. business units in three countries yeah. and one wow. you know so sweden is unique and it actually represents all of europe and then we have a company also in quebec so although we have another company in Canada, you know, you have that special local market that you need to make sure that you're factoring into design. So Rena does a great job working with our team. We have, you know, meetings where we make sure that they are partners in all of the designing that she's working on. Yeah. And uh, Danelle, more to what you were talking about. It's so funny that you explained the core style guide and the trend style guide. I may not have it outlined on my computer as core or trend, but in my head, 
it is as such. For example, we uh, I forget what event it was. There was a cornhole game board we had to design for some event, right, Paula? And um, I was tasked with designing it, and I came up with this cutesy little repeating pattern of Zamboni machines going back and forth. And then we also use that on a tie, or is it a um, yeah, a, a bow tie, tie or a necktie? I forget which kind of tie. So I've got my, in my head my version of trendy stuff and my version of core stuff, and my core colors and trend stuff. So um, it is a useful thing to have in my head. And um, if I ever get the time, I do plan on getting it all on paper at some point so we can hand it off to somebody and say, run with it so that we can um, we, we may need to reach out to design of today sooner rather than later a lot of these things that live in our head we need to get you know shore that up and uh, get it going so yeah. yeah awesome well ladies how can people find you i think rachel you said bewellbrands.com they can find you and that's where they could see any of the other information that you have available whether it's podcasts or things that you're putting out to share yeah and um on my website People can book um, a free consult just to talk through about the brand and the type of resources that they need and see if there's um, a way that we can help grow their business. Great. And Danelle? Um, you can find us at designoftoday.com or um, you can call our Salt Lake office at 801-463-4665. Um, for you non-technical techies, um, that works just fine as well, but that's where you can find us. Great stuff. And if I, you just Google Design of Today, you can see all sorts of um, graphics and patterns that we built for numerous um, clients through the years. I've been the fortunate recipient of some of the fun, playful things that you guys have done, and you really celebrate Halloween as your big event every year. and. Uh, so you can see some of the creativity there. And that's just one of those things that it's like a special touch for the clients that you're working with to, as a reminder, you know, have something that isn't even about their brand, but seeing something that you guys put so much uh, attention and effort into is like one of those things we look forward to on a, a, every year. Super fun, and thanks for keeping us on that list. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I'm so excited that uh, you took the time today to share some information about branding, licensing, design. I think there's a really interesting conversation and hopefully it'll be uh, informative and kind of inspirational for some people who are wondering uh, what their next steps might be. And we've got a couple of great experts here that they can reach out to and, and that we've all I've, we've all learned today as my new word, toyetic. I'm, I'm gonna say it sometime today besides this, besides in front of this group. We'll see if anybody knows what we're talking about. Um, I wanna thank everybody Thanks for, for having our, me. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys for being here. I want to thank um, uh, Danelle and Rachel and everybody for listening to our podcast today. If you're interested in um, sending us information about a topic you'd like to talk about in the future, if you have any questions, you can send it to info at Zamboni.com and you can find Ask the Zamboni Experts as a podcast um, on our YouTube channel as well as through um, Apple and Spotify and everywhere else that podcast people in the world uh, are checking things out. Thank you guys all. And I would like to say on behalf of the Zamboni company, have an ice day. <laughs> <laughs>